All right, I'm here with Jonathan Bryce, one of the co-founders of Moso. <laughs> the Rackspace Cloud. Exactly, which yeah. is now the Rackspace Cloud. So um, tell me about what's, what's going on over there in the cloud space. You guys have uh, official rebranding was when? Um, let's see, we started it in February and, uh, and I think, you know, had shifted everything within a couple of months to, uh, yeah, to the Rackspace Cloud. So um, it was something that Rackspace did across all of its all of its businesses and, and divisions and everything. You know, is, is to bring it all under the Rackspace name. You know, one of the things that when we when we started the cloud company, we wanted a different name for a number of reasons. First of all, you know, we we were we operated separately so that we had a lot of flexibility and freedom to try new things. You know, to not to not get bogged down and. It, you know, the, even the small amount of bureaucracy that, that Rackspace had, but you know, to really be able to go out and and uh, you know pursue this new technology. But then you know, also because it was new technology, it was kind of shaky in, in places, and so we wanted to uh, to you know kind of put some distance between the Rackspace brand, which was you know a very strong brand around stability and reliability, and uh, and you know this new stuff that we were doing, which is kind of by definition a little bit unstable to uh, to start with in the beginning. Um, and you know, over time, as as, uh, as the cloud technology has matured and our systems have matured, then uh, then you know it makes a lot of sense to, to bring that that Rackspace brand name to bear. And we used to think, you know, is it going to be a line extension? Is it going to be something that's going to dilute the Rackspace name? Um, but I think that uh, that you know what we realized is that we were really close to it, and so to us, cloud hosting and managed hosting felt different, and like maybe it should have different names, but to our customers into the world at large, um, it's it's similar. It's it's actually very similar. You know, it's it's a uh, it's kind of the next step from from in-house to colo to managed to cloud, and so uh, you know it it, uh, it it it's actually been been a pretty easy transition. And so now, what are you all offering? You have cloud files, cloud storage. Well, so cloud files is cloud storage. Okay. Uh, so we got cloud files, cloud servers, and cloud sites. Those are the three products we have right now, and uh, and so you know it's a it's a it's a suite of, of products that. Some are, are, you know, kind of infrastructure type components that you can use to, to build on top of um, primitive uh, technology. And then, you know, Cloud Sites is a platform as a service that has a LAMP stack and a .NET stack inside of it. And now which ones, so which one was Slicehost? That was Cloud Servers? Yeah, so Slicehost, um, you know, we, we acquired Slicehost uh, in the last half of, of 2008. And uh, they had technology for managing virtual servers on large scale across multiple data centers because you know that's what their business was. Um, so you know we we bought them, we integrated that technology, and then there are a few product differences between what Slicehost offers still today and and cloud servers. Um, and and so you know the, so after we bought them, then we went through a process of integration, plus you know some some product differences, uh, and, and rolled that out earlier this year as our cloud servers product. You know, when you go to uh, in front of uh, customers and they're trying to trying to understand this whole, whole cloud thing, what are you finding as far as the level of sophistication or confusion <laughs> that they may have with with cloud and, and what it can offer them? Yeah. Well, um, you know, for about a year I've been going around and talking about the cloud, and we've been doing cloud stuff for uh, you know almost four years now, a little over three and a half years, and the uh, uh, you know so for us it's kind of Old hat. We we are we understand it intuitively. We want to talk about advanced ways to use it. And when when I um, went and started talking to customers and potential customers and conferences and that kind of thing last year, what what we realized is that you know a lot of people just they didn't even know what cloud was. And so there was a barrier to getting to those more advanced things, which was you know we have to educate. Um, a, a year on, uh, everybody is is at least familiar with the term. There are a lot of different ideas out there about what makes a cloud or what doesn't make a cloud, but um, you know it's much easier now to uh, to there's just at least a kind of a shared starting point, and and you know now the confusion a lot of times is really around how do the different clouds compare? How do the different types of clouds compare? You know what's the difference between um, you know like cloud sites like a platform as a service and cloud servers or EC2 you know where you're getting virtual servers, and because um, they're they're both clouds and so you know. You, you come into it with an expectation of, well, the cloud lets me do X, and it's like, well, certain types of clouds let you do that, and other types of clouds let you do you know, Y and Z. Uh, so that's kind of where I think it is in terms of the education now. People understand that the cloud is about scalability, instant access, um, you know, pricing that's that's more aligned with usage than than you know minimums, and uh, and so now it's a matter of of understanding the right the right fit for um, you know their use case between the different options in the cloud. 
which of the of the offerings that you have, which ones are do you think are uh, which one are getting the most traction? Are you yeah. the, the storage, is it the servers, is it? Well, they um, you know they all kind of play together, and and this is one of the reasons why we built out these the, the three different products is because um, you know you can run a standard application on cloud sites and not have to worry about any of the any of the scaling or any of the infrastructure, you know, any administration, patching, all anything like that. But then when you know you have a need that maybe doesn't fall into it's in the LAMP stack or something like that, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, you can go spin up a cloud server and you can do whatever it is that you need root for, that you need um, to run this custom software package on. Uh, when you know you maybe have something where you want to have a lot of user-generated content that you want to store, you don't want to put that on expensive primary storage like what cloud sites or cloud servers uses, and so you you know you offload that to cloud files where it's a lot cheaper, and and you know those use cases really fit together. Uh, we're actually talking here at, at Cloud World with a with a customer of ours. Um, the thing that, that we that we see a lot of integration with now too is with Rackspace's traditional hosting managed hosting offerings, and we have a customer who's who's here who's going to speak with us a little later today, um, who is a longtime Rackspace customer, and he's got dedicated servers and network devices, and he's also using cloud servers for um, you know to augment the, the what they offer it's a company called FreshBooks they do um, invoicing and you know they wanted to store all of these artifacts that that you get when you're doing invoicing like the actual invoices and purchase orders and quotes and um, you know uh, requests for for work that kind of thing and it, it started to add up and they realized that you know this was they were gonna quickly get into the business of running storage systems and they wanted to be in the business of writing invoicing software and so they uh, you know they they um, connected that all into the cloud and they they use our cloud for for that stuff and it's it's great because now they don't have to worry about it so I think that's you know that's the transition that we're gonna see over the next couple of years is people um, are gonna figure it out by finding some piece of what they do that, that fits really well into the cloud and they're gonna do it and then they go oh wow you know what that works well I could also use that for you know this other use case or we're starting this new project and I'm going to try that with that. I think that's how, how, it, how it's kind of going to progress from here. Excellent. Jonathan Bryce, <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah, thanks.